God have your way. We surrender all of our plans right in this place. There's nothing like your presence. Come closer, overwhelm us, overflow. There's nothing like your presence. Come closer, fill us up to overflow. We are waiting with expectation. Stir up our faith. As in heaven, let your kingdom come here on the earth. There's nothing like your presence. Come closer, overwhelm us, overflow. There's nothing like your presence. Come closer, fill us up to overflow you are here you are good spirit heal spirit move let your love break through as we worship you we worship you. You are here. You are good. Spirit heal. Spirit move. Let your love break through as we worship you. your presence come closer overwhelm us overflow there's nothing like your presence come closer fill us up to overflow there's nothing like your presence come closer overwhelm overflow there's nothing like your presence come closer fill us up to Good morning. It's great to be back. I know I don't look like I'm happy to be back. Uh, that is only because I'm tired. Now, I don't want to uh, pull wool over your eyes. I'm not actually tired. Um, well, I am tired because of our baby, but, but not for the reasons you would think. Uh, I've actually been getting quite a bit of sleep. My lovely wife, Heather, has been very kind in letting me sleep in. That usually means I'm getting up at 11 or 12 because uh, she's taking over at 3 in the morning. Um, well, couldn't do that today, so uh, that's why I'm a little more tired looking than, than normal. I'm not getting the normal sleep I'd get, but that's okay. I Consistory offered me the opportunity to take more time off, and I said, nope, I'm, I'm still going to keep preaching after those first two weeks, and so here we are. Um, but, I, but I am very thankful to be here, and uh, uh, it's just a blessing to have uh, Theo in our lives, and and Heather's been, been wonderful, and I hope she feels the same way about me, because I know that uh, sometimes it doesn't go both ways, right, in a relationship, but I, I think she'd say that. And uh, we, we both want to thank you for uh, tremendous support, your gifts. Um, I do feel a little bad, because I'm sure some of you uh, were eyeing the uh, cute baby clothes in the store, and then you kind of sadly walked away to the diaper section. Um, but we, we greatly appreciate that. We have 
Um, so many diapers now, and it's awesome because I think we're just our storage room is just full of them. But that that's going to help us out tremendously. So we really do want to thank you for that. And uh, my wife will be uh, taking some time to hand out some cards as uh, thank yous. And I know I've told some of you that, and you say, "Well, no, that's not necessary," uh, but I'm still going to do it. So try to take them with a little grace. But uh, no, we thank you for that. I, I don't have too many announcements um, besides those thanks. Uh, we have consistory on the 16th, so a week later than normal. Um, and I also want to say, uh, I, I missed a number of anniversaries. I've been trying to get better at announcing those uh, from last month. I think uh, Gerard and Cheryl and some other people uh, celebrated some anniversaries. Um, I know Trevor and Lindia Hansen also had one quite recently, last uh, end of last month. So congrats to them. And of course, this Saturday... Uh, Terry and Jill will be celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary, so congratulations to you guys. That, that is an uh, awesome achievement, uh, inspiring for the rest of us trying to, trying to get there, um, or for those who want to look back who celebrate um, longer than 50. So congrats to you guys. That's, that's awesome. Are there any other announcements? All right. Well... Let's then focus our hearts and minds on the Lord as we enter into the call to worship. And our call to worship today comes from Psalm 95, verses 6 through 7. Come, bow down and worship. Kneel to the Lord, our Maker. This is our God, our Shepherd, and we are the flock led with care. Amen. And let's rise Greet each other in the name of the Lord and then worship our God in song and let's do it with vigor. <laughs> vigor I don't have. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes, bless the His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name, you're rich in love and you're slow to anger, your name is great and your heart is kind for all your goodness I will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find bless the Lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. 
And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore, bless the His holy name, sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Worship your holy name, Lord. I'll worship your. be seated. Uh, something I did forget to mention, I've been getting a lot of questions about our focus group results and these sort of things, and that, uh, that will be discussed at this coming consistory. We did not because we were absent one person, um, and we wanted to have a full quorum. Uh, so we also have a week 
or so, it's whatever the date is until the 16th amount of days. If you uh, have any comments or you still feel like you, you want your voice to be heard um, and you want to discuss things and you, or even just ask, what can I offer, uh, please, please reach out to me. Uh, happy to have a talk with you. I've already talked to uh, two or three different couples that weren't able to make it. Um, so your, your voice is, of course, welcome, even if you're not a member. If you're not a member, because uh, membership right now seems to be in a strange area with um, everything going on. Uh, not that the membership isn't important, but um, just a lot of things are kind of in the air with, with how we want to go forward with, with the church and uh, the direction we're taking it. But uh, we're not, we haven't made any crazy decisions or anything. Um, it's not being kept under wraps. We just haven't had the ability to talk about it, but it will be coming soon. With that said, let's uh, again focus our hearts and minds on the Lord. As, uh, this time we enter into the call to confession. And our call to confession today comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 19 through 22. Since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water, and we pray. Lord, sometimes our lives have such little focus. We have so much to do. We possess so many things. We're driven by the need for still more, and it easily seems to control us. And we come to you, Lord, sorry. Sorry for how distracted we've become and for losing our way without even realizing it. Forgive us. Forgive us and help us to know that we, or rather that you, are the only one that we need. And at this time, I ask you to take just this moment of silence to pass your sins, to confess your sins to the Lord. Christ is our peace. Those who are divided, he has made one. He has broken down the barriers of separation by his death and has built us up into one body with God. To all who repent and believe, he has promised reconciliation. Therefore, go and live as people reconciled. Amen. We are back to the Heidelberg Q&A number 20. The question asked today, because we just got done with our last section, pointing us to Christ. Are all people then saved through Christ, just as they were lost through Adam? And the answer to that is no, only those are saved who through true faith are grafted into Christ and accept all his benefits and there is, of course, as with most of these, a number of scriptural precedents. But uh, in this case, I like this particular little section from John uh, chapter 3. And of course, we all know John 3.16, but also uh, 18 and 36. And of course, the first, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. 18 is... Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And lastly, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but must endure God's wrath. And as we will see uh, Interestingly, as this often happens, this will tie directly into our scripture for today. And I think normally we uh, would go into the prayer for offering, but for some reason in our worship order, um, this is what happens when you're gone for a few weeks, so we go right into song here, and then we do the uh, 
um, prayer for those things. So I ask you all to stand up one more time as we once again worship God in song before we go into prayer and our scripture. be seated. We thank you as ever for our tithes and offerings, and we will pray accordingly as well as um, our prayer of the people. And so let's once again join each other in prayer. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. We praise you, God, our creator, for your handiwork in shaping and sustaining your wondrous creation. We especially thank you for the miracle of life and the wonder of living. Particular blessings coming to us in this day. The resources of the earth, gifts of creative vision and skillful craft. The treasure stored in every human life. We pray for others claiming your love in Jesus Christ for the whole world committing ourselves to care for those around us in his name. We especially pray for those who work for the benefit of others, those who cannot work today, those who teach and those who learn, people who are poor, the church in persecution. God, our creator, yours is the morning and yours is the evening. Let Christ the Son of Righteousness, shine forever in our hearts and draw us to the light of your radiant glory. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen.
Hear now the word of the Lord in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 18 through 31. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you your remembrance, all that I have said to you. Peace I leave you with, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise up, let us go from here. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord our God, in the reading and proclamation of your word, we pray you will illumine our minds and hearts that we may hear and understand your word, know and live according to your word, and become living letters of your word, equipped to follow Jesus in every part of our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Christ, our word, our Lord. Amen. The very last sermon I gave right before paternity leave, and the world was turned a little upside down. I did a uh, sermon on the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. But in that discussion, we glossed over the first verse from that section, verse 15, which from the mouth of Jesus says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. A helpful word to keep in mind when Jesus says this, is this, distinction. Distinction is the helpful key word here. That is to say, a distinction is traits or characteristics that set one thing apart from another. While on one hand, two weeks off of work sounds nice and leisurely, the distinction is that being with a newborn all night and day makes it quite different than a vacation. In a Christian sense, we are supposed to be a distinct, holy people that are present in, in the world. That doesn't mean we are holier than thou. We don't lord holiness over people. It doesn't even mean that we are perfect, of course. We are imperfectly holy, but still we are called to be a distinct, holy people. Again, present and in the world, but not of the world. And the New Testament is chock full of verses related to that idea of that distinction being in the world but not of the world. Philippians 3.20, but our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
In just four chapters, in John 18, Jesus says, My kingdom is not from the world. And if Jesus is our king, well, this isn't his kingdom. I mean, it, it is in a sense, but not right now. Hebrews 13, 14, For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. 1 John 2, verses 15 and 17, Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. Kind of seeing a theme in these verses. They seem to go back and forth between doing the will of God, following the commandments of God, being in God. It's not enough, and I know I've said this the last few sermons, probably a lot of my sermons. It's not enough to just say, I follow Christ, because many people claim to follow Christ. We talked about the last few months, what, what sets us apart as a church from other churches in the area? Not that we're better than them, or even that we are more Christian or less Christian, not about that, but just what makes us different. Why go to this church rather than uh, any church? Gethsemane. For some reason, I wanted to call it Redeemer. I don't, I don't know why, but all these churches in the area. What sets our beliefs and values as different from other churches or organizations here or anywhere? Every church in this area, and I'd wager to say every church in this country or even the world, at least the vast majority of them would say, I follow Christ. But is it enough to merely assent to that belief and move on? Or, or do we have to dig a bit deeper? Is there, is there a little bit more to it than that? So there is a distinction and one major distinction is that Christ gifts us as believers differently than non-believers. We have different tasks, different jobs, different experiences, and they may not all be necessarily pragmatically better than non-believers. And what do I mean by that? Well, when I say pragmatically, what I mean is that Christ coming, or rather you coming to Christ, does not mean your life will be, as the world would see it, measurably better. I would say, personally, me coming to Christ, it has been better, both in a measurable worldly way, but also, um, obviously, in a way that the world would not see. In fact, I've lost quite a few friends coming to Christ because of what comes along with that. Hopefully, that's not an excuse. Sometimes it can be. But some people, and maybe I've told this story before in, in uh, especially other cultures where, uh, for example, um, I've read a story about some uh, uh, Hindu people who had converted to Christianity. And then after less than a year, they all left the faith and they went back to Hinduism. Why did they do that? Because they were like, well, I thought my life would get a lot better. I thought I'd be blessed. I thought I'd start, I don't know, getting more promotions at work, better paychecks. Something would change. Nothing really changed, so I moved on. Is that our faith, though? Do, do, we, do we come to Christ because we're just hoping for something here and now that'll just make life better in that sense. It could happen. The, the Lord could uh, uh, bless you richly. But you may be a Job. And remember, Job didn't forsake the Lord as soon as things went awry. So we have distinctions in mind, but how can we apply this to the text? Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Note that Jesus doesn't say, if you love me, you would keep my commandments. He says, you will. And in the rest of the passage, the scripture that we read at the start, Christ says again in verse 21, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Now, what does that mean? What on earth does it mean that the Lord will manifest himself to those who believe in him? Well, as we see in the text, Judas, not Iscariot, who's also called Jude or Thaddeus, the disciples had a lot of different names. 
He wonders the same thing, and he asks Christ in so many words, how will you appear to us, make yourself known to us, but, but not to others? And keep in mind, it wasn't so long ago that the disciples had heard from Christ something that seemed contrary, that he wouldn't be hidden to the world upon his return, but as it says in Matthew chapter 24, they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So why was Christ now saying that he would make himself known to the disciples, or rather those who love him, but not to the rest of the world? Because Christ here is not speaking of his physical return in the sense of the second coming. Remember, Christ said at the beginning of this passage that he would ask the Father to, ha to send the Holy Spirit whom the world cannot receive. Friends, if you, you ever read these passages and, and get confused about the Holy Trinity and how it was that the early church came up with the concept of three persons that make up the one being of God, I, I have to say, I think this passage is a beautiful example, even though I, I don't think I've really heard theologians uh, talk about it. I'm sure someone has. I just personally have not read that. Because we, we see how clearly Christ indicates to us, he offers us the vantage point of seeing that all three persons of the Trinity have their own roles. And yet the language that Christ uses implies a sort of unity at the same time. In Christ's response to Jude, he says, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. And then he goes on further again, but the helper the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. We see it right there. Each person of the Holy Trinity working together in unity. They're, they're not all doing the same thing because they're not all one person. That doesn't mean they're less God. And an uh, even smaller caveat, because... As much as some might dismiss the Trinity as irrelevant to the modern age because it seems so complicated and esoteric, I have to say it's not because it's literally the most foundational doctrine we have about the nature of the being of God. I want to point out that those who deny Christ as God will often use this verse here, we're, we're, and I don't want to gloss over it. It says, if you love me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. Well, as some would say, aha, there you go. How can Christ and the Father be God, but the Father is greater than Jesus? There you have it. Christ isn't God. But again, we, we go back to that word, distinctions. Hopefully this is a, a helpful example. Can you be greater than or less than or equal to someone or something all at once? And I would say yes. I am greater than my son, Leaf. What do I mean by that? I am greater than him in my authority, in my respect in our household. But am I greater than him in dignity and, and worth? No. We're both sons of God, brothers in the Lord in that sense. So am, in a sense, am I greater than my son? Yes, of course I am. I'm his father. In another sense, is he's greater than I am. I would give my life for him. I think that's my job as, as a parent and someone that loves him. There's distinctions. There's differences. But for some reason, and even Christians are guilty of this, we, we don't allow these distinctions for God that we allow for ourselves. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are co-equal and co-eternal. But are they co-equal in roles? Well, no, because the Son did not send the Father. The Holy Spirit does not send the Son. They are co-equal in Godhood, in being. Categories, distinctions, again, they matter. Don't let someone trick you and say, this verse demonstrates to us that Christ is not God. Because when they say that, they are demonstrating a basic misunderstanding of what the Trinity is. And back to the main point. And remember, 
Why is Christ saying this at all? Well, the disciples are concerned. They're, they're worried. They're anxious. So Christ is trying to get them to relax a little. Say, hey, it's going to be all right. He's assured his disciples, as we are assured, that he, in the fullness of his deity, will be with us now, even if we still await his return. Christ is telling us, deeper than the understanding that the Spirit will be with us, that we are set apart as a distinct people, that in him, in Christ, we need not fear. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Nothing on God's green earth, short of his word, will provide this same assurance of peace. And that is why Christ tells us that if we love him, we will follow his commands. We will follow his commands because this goes beyond the extent of the gospel, the extent of the New Testament messages. It means that if we love him, we will necessarily feel drawn to follow scripture. And why? Because God puts it in our hearts. It says right there, the son asked the father to send what? The paraclete, the Holy Spirit, his helper. We are enabled by God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to follow his word. To want to follow. The will to follow. We are in a world that is sin. We are born and trapped in a world of sin. And God sends his Holy Spirit and he enables us to actually have a fighting chance against that sin nature. The sin nature that you and I were born into. This is the ultimate distinction that there are those with the Spirit and those without. And I ask all of you today, would you rather be enabled to walk with God or would you rather be left in darkness, a candle without a flame? I think we know the answer. Now I want to close on these words of prayer from the great reformer Martin Luther. It's a short one. In your grace and mercy, preserve us in faith that we may never doubt your promise, but find our comfort in you in all temptations. Send us your Holy Spirit that we may renounce sin and always continue in the righteousness given us in baptism until we receive eternal salvation by your grace. In this we pray. Amen. And once again, for a final time today, let's worship our God in song. is the nation whose God is the Lord. Their trust is not in the shield or the sword. They turn their eyes to heaven whatever they face. Crowned in Bye.
Someone shout it out. What day is it? No. It's donut day. Thank you. Come on, guys. Receive now the blessing of the Lord. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.